Today we will look at the difference between the geopotential and the geometric altitude and what it actually is. Because I don't know if you noticed, but during the derivation of the hydrostatic equation and the standard, especially the standard atmosphere, we made a simplification. Let's have a look at our little disk of air which we use in a hydrostatic equation. We used a standard constant g throughout our equations. So we used a standard gravity acceleration. But in reality, if you go up in the atmosphere, the g changes. And this means that we are actually wrong with our altitude. The altitude which we calculated, which is the geopotential altitude, as it is uh, commonly called, is not the real altitude. The real altitude is the geometric altitude. And you would use the geometric altitude if you would also let the gravity acceleration vary with altitude. Because the gravity, the force of gravity, decreases if we get further away from the center of the Earth. You see here the difference expressed in the equations. So the dh without a, a index is the geopotential altitude. Because this is actually the default altitude which we always use. The hg is a geometric altitude with the correct g. Let's have a look at what the difference is. For this, we will first look at uh, the gravity, the law of gravity itself. On the right side on the screen here, we see the, the Earth with the radius of the Earth, Re, and the, the mass of the Earth indicated as Me. And we, we are a certain mass m flying at a geometric altitude hg. The general law of gravity is written as fg is the gravity constant times one mass times the second mass divided by the distance squared. We always write fg is m times our gravity constant at, for instance, at sea level. So, let's uh, see what the, the g at sea level is. g0 basically becomes the mass of the Earth times the gravity constant divided by Re squared. While at altitude, our g becomes g, again the mass, but then the radius of Earth plus the geometric altitude squared. From this, we can see what the relation between the two types of g is. And for this, we can simply divide them by saying g divided over g0 is, well, the, the gravity constant on the Earth, of the, the, the mass of the Earth is the same, which means we get 1 divided by Re plus Hg squared on the top side of the division, and we get it 1 divided by the radius of the Earth squared on the bottom side. In other words, this becomes our relation for the two Gs because that's the origin of our error. So this relation we will now use to see what the effect is on the hydrostatic equation. In the hydrostatic equation we have written dp is minus rho g dh. And it's this part that we're interested in. Assuming we have the same pressure difference, we want to see what the difference in altitude is. So in one case, we have used g0 with the geopotential altitude. In the other situation, we have used the, should have used the real g with the geometric altitude. And this shows the relation between the two types of, of altitude. A change in geopotential altitude is g over g0 times a change in geometric altitude. And for this we just derived a relation 
RE squared divided by RE squared plus the geometric altitude. So RE squared RE plus HG squared and again times the HG. So taking this and this side of the equation and again because this is only true for small altitude changes by making it into an integral we can solve this. So let's see what happens if we go to a certain altitude with this geopotential altitude. So we go to a certain altitude with gh and this should be equal then to going to the, for if there's the same pressure change to the geometric altitude which then becomes this equation. And this is an integral we can solve. It's a, s a simple polynomial divided by a polynomial. We can write this in a neater way. So let's solve this integral. Um, d h and writing it uh, like this r e squared times 0 to h g 1 divided by r a plus h g squared d h g and this is the same as R e plus h g to the power minus 2. In other words, it becomes the, 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 the integral becomes minus 1 divided by R e plus h g. Again, multiplied by R e squared minus, and we need to fill in the 0. altitude which will give us this equation. So to get rid of 1 Re we bring one earth radius inside the brackets which means we get Re times minus Re divided over Re plus Hg minus Re divided by Re. And this now simplifies into Re times minus Re divided by Re plus Hg plus 1. In other words, Re plus Hg minus Re divided by Ra plus Hg. And this shows that the, the final result is earth radius divided by the earth radius plus the geometric altitude times the geometric altitude. And this is our value h, because that's the, the solution of the left side of the equation. So the final solution of the relation between geometric altitude and geopotential altitude is this equation. What do we learn from this equation? Well, we can see that what really matters is how large Hg is compared to the earth radius. And to, give an, to get an impression, <coughs> the earth radius is 6, 3, uh, something like 80 kilometers or 84 kilometers, something like this. So the altitudes at which we fly are, are always in the order of 20 kilometers. So we can see that the effect is not that large, but we can also look at an actual value. Let's take an example, for instance, the 20 kilometers and see what the effect really is, what the percentage of the error is which we make if we use the, the geopotential altitude instead of the geometric altitude.
So what is the effect of our approximation of using the geopotential altitude instead of the geometric altitude? Well, let's, the let's use the result of our derivation to calculate it. Um, we know that the average Earth radius is 6,378 kilometers. And let's use a very high altitude of 20 kilometers to see the effect of the difference between geopotential and geometric altitude. Well, if we use our equation and fill in these numbers, we can see that the actual error is very small. At the geometric altitude of 20,000 meters, of, at, of 20 kilometers, our geopotential altitude would say that we're only at 19,937.5 meters. This means the error is about 0.3%, which is very small. And uh, this is also one of the reasons why we get away with this uh, approximation and why we use the geopotential altitude. Often, by the way, it's the other way around. When we say we are at 20,000 meters altitude, so 20 kilometers, you might wonder what is in that case the geometric altitude. For this, you need to invert the equation on the top side of the slide and then fill in the number 20 kilometers for the geopotential altitude, h, and then you can calculate the geometric altitude. This would be a good exercise for you to try.